Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today we're making book holder place thingies. Let's, let's do this. <sighs> Have you ever thought that I've been reading this book and I need to go do something else, but I forgot where I last left off and you'd really like to hold that spot? Well, I've been trying to figure that out too. So at first I thought I could just shove something in there. It worked perfectly fine. But then uh, I need something a little bit different. Well, let's try something else. Ooh, a chisel. Ah, a saw. We're getting closer. How about a child's hand? Um, okay. Let's make something for this. And that's why I invented the hold your placer. And uh, yeah, the name, uh, it's still in progress. Now, one of the reasons why I really wanted to do this video is about once a week to once every other week, I get a comment or a question from someone asking, how do I plane really thin stock by hand? And uh, I said, well, um, you plane it like a bookmark. And so that meant I needed to make a video about how to make bookmarks. So here we go. I'm actually going to be doing some fun here with a couple different pieces. And I have uh, three different colors of wood that I'm going to be sandwiching together and then uh, planing them on angles so you can see all three of them. And so this is something of fun I wanted to try. But this means you have to saw down thin material. And usually I'll saw it down to about an eighth inch. Um, I put a mark on all of these at a little bit uh, less than an eighth of an inch. Um, and that way I have one side that is planed perfectly smooth and then the other side will be rough from the saw. Um, the smooth side then you can glue to others. But what happens if you need a smooth side on both? And that's why I wanted to do three of these so that I have two smooth sides on the outside pieces that then have to be glued to the two smooth sides of the inside piece. Um, unfortunately, after putting this all together, I realized the three colors I picked made this whole thing look like Neapolitan ice cream. Uh, the nice thing about this is you can always do it with scrap wood from around the shop. And so making a bookmark is a fantastic way to use up those tiny little pieces of wood that uh, there's nothing else to do with. Now, the big trick I like to use is double-sided tape. And it's one of those things that... Uh, you have to take a few precautions to it because number one, it can hold too well, or number two, it doesn't hold quite enough. And I find that the, the cheap uh, carpet tape is sometimes the best. It isn't quite as strong and durable as the high-end tape. Um, the, the stuff that doesn't have the fiber in it will hold well, but will still pop back off. So for this one, I've got that thin piece, and I took that down to about a sixteenth of an inch. Um, and then these two outside pieces are a little thicker. And so I'm going to apply on epoxy, clamp it down in, and then I've got this blob of schmoo with three different colors on it. I want to shape that down and smooth out all the sides. The, uh, the, the two sides are pretty easy because I can just plane those down. And I did make sure when I laminated them together that the grain was going the same direction. That makes everything so much easier. Um, and because I was just doing these three pieces, I could take the time and make sure that they were. Uh, with the exception of the, uh, the purple heart there, uh, that has grain going in all different directions. Then for the two ends of this, we're just going to cut it down to length. Now, you see that the inside piece is a good bit thinner, and the outside pieces are thicker, and I want these all to be about the same thickness. So this one is a, a, a thick enough piece, I can just put it on a stop and plane it down until all three of them are roughly about the same. Then with this, I want to plane it on an angle. And so here I was doing a little bit of experimenting because I've never planed something this thin on an angle, but we thought, figured I'd try it. Uh, planing on an angle then would allow me to see all three woods as I plane through it. So I originally put it on here, and I had the stop on there thinking that would help, uh, but I found that in the end the, the tape was uh, more than enough by itself, so I slid the stop down a little later. I ended up having to move it again and put it a little bit closer to the edge so that my plane could kind of hang off like this. For the first side, I'm rough planing it down uh, until I see all three of the colors come through, and then I'm going to switch over to my smoothing plane and detail it down until I get this nice schmoo between them. I went a little bit too much on the paduk, but that's okay. At this point, it's a little bit thick still, uh, so I can still peel it off the tape very easily. Um, the last time when you peel it off is the time you're going to have to be very, very careful. Um, the tape is only good for one use, and so you're going to have to uh, reuse it each time. 
With it flipped over, now I'm just going to plane it down parallel to the bench, and I'm really loving how these curls are coming out, um, but I'm just going to take it down to about a 32nd of an inch. And with this, it is just taped it down to the bench. Um, a 32nd of an inch, the stop really doesn't hold much of anything. The problem then comes, how do you take this off? And you have to be very, very careful with it. I'm going to work up one side and just get that up a little bit, and that will get me enough that I can actually get my card scraper underneath there, and that will let me hold this whole thing in place and peel it up. Up and very, very slowly and very, very carefully uh, peel it up. Now, sometimes it comes off of the tape and sometimes the tape stays on it. Um, and so you just kind of have to work with it. In this case, the tape stuck to the piece. So that means to flip it over and peel the tape off. But it actually came pretty well. And I actually kind of liked how this one came out. I was, uh, I was not expecting the Neapolitan colors, but hey, that's the way it is. So we're going to do this again, but this time with just simple scraps. Uh, these are some other pieces that I have that were lying around. This one was about an eighth inch thick. Um, it's a dark uh, zebra wood. Um, and uh, they're pretty straightforward. And it's something thin like this. Just tape it down to the tape, to the bench, and plane it down. And I took it down to about a 32nd inch. Uh, actually, I think on one end of this, it was a little bit thicker, and I was planing to see how thin I could actually get it. This one peeled off a lot easier. But for the last one, I decided to really make it difficult on me, and I decided to go with curly white oak. Uh, and if you've ever planed curly white oak, it is an absolute uh, pain. The grain goes every different direction, and so you have to take your time and do it with the uh, with a good, well set up smoothing plane. So I've got this piece that I cut off of a project probably five or six years ago, and it's been in my scrap pile for a while. And one corner of it is almost the right thickness, and then the rest of it is a good bit too thick. And so I'm going to very, very thin and very, very carefully take off very, very, very thin shavings. When working with um, delicate grain, you're going to have to be careful because it's very easy for that tear out to then suddenly go all the way through the piece. Um, and so any amount of tear out is an absolute pain. And this one I had to be very, very careful with how I peeled it off. Um, but take your time, let it come off, and it came off actually surprisingly well. And just like that, we have a thin stock bookmark. And what do we need to do with these? Of course, we need to apply some BLO, um, boiled linseed oil, and it uh, works pretty well. Just make sure you clean it off completely before putting it in the book. Otherwise, you'll get, uh, well, stains. <laughs> before I put on boiled linseed oil, I like to hit it with uh, some high grit sandpaper. This is 400 grit, and that loads really fine dust down into the grain. Uh, that dust going down into the grain will allow the, uh, the BLO to soak in a little bit more, and you get to see more of those colors coming out. Uh, now, in this one, you can actually see some of the, the tear out on that purple heart in the corner. The grain was switching, and I just couldn't quite get that out. I would have to work at it a bit more and take the thickness down more than I'd want to. But I was really happy at how the color came out on this. It just uh, it was very pleasing to see the, uh, the the different change through there. I really like that one. This was a little bit darker than I would like, and, of course, BLO always makes the wood a, a bit darker. Uh, but I, uh, once it was dried off, it came out very well. And then, of course, the, the main event that everyone's been waiting for, uh, curly white oak. Oh, yes. Um, that is just such a pleasing moment when that all comes through. And especially with something so thin and flexible like this, it was, it was a lot of fun. So I'll let that sit on there, apply some paste wax, wipe it and polish it off, and that's it. I mean, I could do a little bit more of shaping them, but I didn't really need to. I really like these. I was very, very pleased with how they came out. And uh, yeah, uh, I might have to make some more of these. It'd be a really good, quick Christmas present. It really didn't take much time to plane these down. And I am very pleased with how they came out. So there you go. Happy. <laughs> <laughs> so there you have it. We have curly white oak, Neapolitan, and we have zebra wood. And I really like how these came out. It, working with thin stock can often be very, very difficult. Making your own veneer is, um, is kind of a challenge. And sometimes it works really well and sometimes it doesn't. And I like to show a couple different ways of doing it. I like using the double-sided tape method, though your mileage may vary. So uh, yeah, have a little bit of fun with it. This is a good chance to try something really quick if you're looking for a really cool last minute present. Uh, Christmas is coming up. These actually work really well. And uh, I want to try some other things, especially like this one with laminating the three colors together. kind of like how that came out. 
But uh, yeah, a lot of fun. Everyone's got scrap in their shop, so you can make a bookmark. I hope you like it. And if you have any thoughts or ideas, or let me know which one of these three you like the most, throw that down in the comments down below. That does help out the channel. So thank you. Every time you comment, or you hit the like, the share, subscribe, or interact with the video in any way, that really helps us out. It gets us in front of more people. Uh, it helps the channel grow, and that means more than I can say. So thank you for that. If you'd like to take it even farther, there are a bunch of names over here. Those are all of the patrons on Patreon. Uh, without patrons, we wouldn't exist. We are sponsored by you, the viewer, and thank you. Uh, if you'd like to help out with that and keep us going, keep the lights on, and keep these videos coming, you can find out more about Patreon in the description down below, or click the little join button and become a member here on YouTube. We have special perks for both of them. So I think that'll do it for now, and until next time, have a wonderful day. Wait a minute, are you telling me someone else already invented the Mark Booker?